Hi all, welcome to the Star Chat program of Gulf i Four News. And today we have two guests. One Mr. Professor Dr. Edward Roy Krishnan, the founder and director general at the European International University. And the second one is Dr. Paul Schwartz, consulting faculty in European International University, uh, Paris. And also he is a co-founder of Resilience Coaching International City of uh, so, uh, so South Africa. And when I checked your profile, no, uh, your uh, educational degrees are endless. No? <laughs> the first is uh, BLA, the Bachelor of uh, Liberal Arts, MA, Master of Arts, MS, Master of Science, and MBA, Master of Bus Business Administration, and um, MCOUNT, that is Master of Counseling. Yes. Is, is it? Yes. Okay, of okay. M. Phil, Master of Philosophy and uh, EDD, the Doctor of Education and DBA, Doctor of Business Administration and PhD, Doctor of uh, Philosophy. Uh, you forgot, I have yes, two sir. more honorary doctorates also. Honorary doctorates. In, in BC, total, I have five doctorates. Oh, five doctorates. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good and excellent. Okay. Okay. First of all, my question is uh, the purpose of your visit, no? You are coming from uh, uh, France yes. in related to the European International University. Yes. And uh, what is the purpose or intention of this uh, visit to Dubai? Okay, we are here because we have got a few global partners in uh, UAE. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I have had partners, uh, the European International University has had partners uh, in UAE for the past three years. But now we have uh, become more active in this market because of the demand and because of our growing influence in this market. Okay. So we have come to uh, meet with our partners. Uh, to work with them, to support them, and to meet with some of our students as well as uh, the faculty members of the different partners. Also, we are here for an international education conference uh, going to happen on the 25th and 26th, but that is uh, of ESSEC UK, which is also an accreditation body that accredits uh, the European International University. Is it in Dubai, that yes. conference? That the okay. conference is at uh, Raffles uh, Hotel. Yes, yeah. Yeah, two day conference. So, we are also part of that event. So, both of us are presenting papers at the event. Okay, can you say something brief about the history of this uh, European International University? What is it? Our viewers need to know that. Yes. So, I personally founded the university with very specific goals in mind. I, I won't do justice to this uh, story if I don't tell uh, another related story, right? When so, it was happened, there was this establishment? Yes, this? so I, I will tell you why I started yes, so why, yeah. the That's university. Yeah, right. Every time I went home, I'm from Malaysia, originally yes. from Malaysia. Yeah. So every time I went home, my mother used to tell me to help someone or the other to pay off their school fee. Yes. And I, I started investigating what kind of program they're studying, what kind of uh, fee they're paying. Uh, people in Malaysia pay very hefty amounts, very huge amounts to complete a certificate program or a diploma program. You know, and, and I started wondering uh, why this is the case. Education is supposed to improve life. Education yes, is supposed to be an investment, which you get a return on investment, right? Yes, but these single mothers, especially single mothers, they've got children who are admitted in a program and then they are not able to pay, then they take loans. Sometimes they take loans from loan sharks and then they get you know, indebted and it's a huge problem, financial yes, issue. Yes, yes. So that really struck my mind and I, I was wondering why is it that education is so expensive? And, and it's, it's supposed to improve life, it's supposed to help people, especially people who are underprivileged and you know, uh, marginalized, to come out of the poverty. So that's why I actually you know, thought about starting a university. I did not want to start just another university similar to other universities, uh, carbon copy, so to say. Yes, yes, yes. No, I didn't want that. I wanted a university that is affordable. Now again, a lot of people start thinking about this particular uh, idea of affordability as being cheap. I said, no, affordability does not mean, mean cheap. It is not equal to cheap, okay? Because uh, you can be affordable, at the same time, you can have very high quality of education. And we have proved that over the years by, uh, you know, uh, by looking at the kind of uh, organizations, international organizations, external bodies that accredit us, that quality assure, European International University. So, this is how the university was founded. Well, actually, you are a university mm -hmm. is providing the primary education or the degree level education. What type of subjects you are... Actually, uh, our company level. itself, our company has got exactly. uh, education at all levels. Oh, we yes. are starting from preschool, yeah. kindergarten, primary school, middle school, oh. high school. Yes, yes right. we've oh, got okay. multiple campuses uh, in different places. Okay. And then we actually uh, extended that services, those services to university. But frankly speaking, our international schools are, you know, 
international schools. Yes, so right. international schools are, you know, very premium fees. But that is not, you know, my primary uh, role. My primary role is to take care of our university. And so we were uh, set up in 2018, May 2018, and we are just a few years old, but then we have made a huge progress. And uh, globally, we are very well known now. Yes, a lot yes. of people uh, contact us uh, to become our partners. A lot of students, uh, you know, want to be part of us. And some of our students, in fact, uh, enroll in programs again and again, multiple times. Yes, and right. sometimes I even have to reject them and say, no, please stop studying, you know, go and work, do something good for the society, you know, do something else. But that's how passionate they become uh, because of the, the core values that we advocate for. Okay. So this is the, the birth of EIU. I think I would also add another story. Sir, when I came through the profile, no, it is uh, the private institution, this European International yes. University, no, promising the accreditation, no, ASIC, A S I C, ASIC, yes. no, accreditation for international service of or uh, schools, colleges, universities. How yes. it works like? So, so no, we are accredited by ASIC. Yes, sir. Right, we are accredited. So, by by, by ASIC. By ASIC. By ASIC. So, ASIC is a is an external it's body. External body. Yeah. Uh, recognized by the government of uh, UK. Oh, yeah. Yes. So sir, we sir, applied yeah, for yeah. accreditation by ASIC. Oh, yes, sir. So from the first year itself, our first move to assure parents, to assure students that we are not just another institution that are open, you know, to, to grab people's money and to offer whatever we can offer and then, you know, you know uh, make profit out of it. No, we wanted people to know that we are quality assured. Because in education, this is the biggest issue. There are a lot of uh, operators out there who, who say that they run programs, this and that, okay? But then... Little do people know about what goes behind the scene in terms of them taking care of uh, students' learning experiences. Now, again, I'm an educator. My core training is in education. In fact, I was a teacher trainer before. And Dr. Paul Charles and I, yes, we yes. did a lot of teacher trainings together before, before COVID. Uh, and so that's my background. So coming from that background, I'm very concerned about students' learning. So normally universities are established and then you enroll students and then whether they learn or not, you know, it's not a primary concern. But for me, for, for European International University, we make sure that every student does learn. They must learn. Okay. In the global level, what is the strength of your university? The both we have of, about 4,000, uh, between 4,000 to 5,000 students now. Uh, yeah, 4,000 to 5,000 5, 5, students. 5, 000 students yes. But if you, if you really count how many students we certify yeah. on a yearly basis, I think more than 8,000. Certification. But these are students we are not delivering the actual learning. But our partners deliver the learning and assessment, we certify them. So we, we have got you know, a lot of uh, following, a lot of uh, students, a lot of graduates, uh, and it's growing every day. Uh, Dr. Paul George, uh, the consulting faculty in European International University, Paris. For our viewers, uh, he holds a doctor in psychology degree which research Emphasis on how to use the core principles of cognitive, behavioral, and therapy and extrapolate models for resilience in business, professional, and personal development. And he is also a uh, uh, well known author uh, of the books, different books I think you have written now, uh, Business Resilience and the Resilient Thinking. And he is also the lead author of the facilitator of the program beyond that. Okay. How you have come to know about this European International University and what is your experience, the colorful experience with this uh, university? My awareness and relationship with the university, the European International University in Paris, is not so much with the university, but it is actually with the person behind the university. And that is why I'm so passionate about EIU Paris. I'm passionate because I know the background story that started EIU Paris. And I know Dr. Krishnan, who is the founder for EIU. I personally know his struggle for him to come to where he is today and for him to want to transfer that kind of uh, expertise, for him, to, for him to help others avoid that kind of struggle yes. so that their success can, they can come quicker to their success, for me is a very commendable thing. And that is what attracted me to EIU. Because if you want a degree program, you can get a degree anywhere. I mean, if you yes. think about it, you can get a degree anywhere. But there's not many people who can afford a degree anywhere. And to see his story of how he started EIU has really attracted me to it and made me want to be part of it. Sometimes in life, you find your significance in being part of something that is bigger than you. 
<laughs> yes, right. And EIU is like that. Yes, like that. E EIU is like that. That is why EIU has so many partners all over the world. It's not because they are making money, but because they have bought into the vision to actually make a significant difference in the world, to actually impact lives right where they are in different countries of the world. And that is an amazing thing. So my relationship with EIU starts with the relationship with the founder, which is Dr. Edward Roy Krishnan. So his passion to help students not to have similar struggles or through their struggles that he had, for me was an amazing magnet to draw me to EIU. So that's how I became part of EIU. I'm also an alum, alumnus of EIU. Mm -hmm. I did my doctorate in psychology with EIU. So, and I saw the way uh, education is delivered. You can have a degree, but the way it is delivered is also uh, it, it affects you as a graduate. And the way EIU delivers the education is very commendable. So my doubt is, you have done your psychology from EIU. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. And after that, you became the faculty of there. Yes. 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 Okay. First. And and when you when with my experience with EIU, yes. that is what made me want to be part of EIU, because then I know how the system works. I've been part of the system at least at that level, and then. When I was asked to be a consulting uh, faculty member of EIU, it, I, I didn't have to think much yes, because sir. it was an exciting opportunity for me. I wanted to be part of a vision that is actually changing lives across the world. How you have come to a faculty like Mr. Dr. Uh, uh, Paul Scholz? Yes. yes. So yes, you, you did ask about faculty <laughs> and I got distracted. But coming back to the yes. issue about faculty. Yes. Yeah, right. So you'll, you'll be happy and at the same time surprised to know that we have got top-notch faculty members even working at uh, traditional universities, large universities. Okay. They already have their own doctorate and they will actually come and pursue another doctorate with us. Okay. At the same time, they wish to be part of us as a faculty member, as a visiting lecturer, a young professor. So this is because they advocate for the same values that we advocate for. They, they are passionate about the same thing that we are passionate about. So they, I don't actually view them as faculty members who we pay salary or payment. No, they are actually our partners more than anything. In fact, we have even students like that yes, who would follow us, who would encourage us, who would you know, continue to nurture us and the whole vision of EIU itself. So, faculty members, our priority is actually industry expertise. 